on. How are you? Nice, nice to meet you. We're meeting for the first time. Uh, yeah, let's sit. I'll take a seat. Uh, good morning, Hyperledger Hi, Global Forum. It's wonderful uh, to be here. This is my uh, second Hyperledger event, my first global forum. I had the privilege of speaking in Montreal, Quebec, and Canada in 2018 at the Hyperledger Member Forum. Was anybody in Montreal in 2018? Awesome, wonderful. It's nice to see you again. Hope we'll have the opportunity to meet. Um, my name is Hillary Carter. I am the VP of Research at the Linux Foundation. And my role at the LF is to describe through data-driven insights the opportunities, the challenges, and um, the, the technologies that are being created across open source project communities. We've done lots of work with Hyperledger. And we're here to create a public utility that is free um, just like the open source technologies themselves, widely available. And our reports are designed to help inform strategy and decision making and to overcome barriers to understanding um, uh, what's really taking place in open source project communities. We want to dispel myths and misperceptions. We've had the privilege of doing a number of projects already with Hyperledger. My previous role was at an organization called the Blockchain Research Institute, where I did a similar thing specific to blockchain technologies, describing which uh, projects were um, operating along different industry verticals and uh, converging with different technologies. So enough about me. Elon, <laughs> uh, please, why don't you just take a minute to introduce yourself. Uh, tell us about your journey um, at Blockchain. Thank you, Hilary. And well, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm coming here basically to, to find a way to, uh, come to talk with everybody of you, uh, to learn a little bit about your projects and also to communicate about what we have been doing in Lakshin. Uh, Lakshin is an initiative that born in 2019, uh, end of 2018. Um, and it's actually a result of some uh, researches that we were doing in the Inter-American Development Bank in how to develop uh, use cases using blockchain technology. And we found out some challenges that especially governments and uh, public sector, mostly uh, institutional players, were dealing uh, back then to uh, scale up their solutions. So most of the challenges were related with regulation and how they can be in compliance with the regulation, those use cases. And, and basically our um, proposal with uh, latching is to bring that technology a little bit closer to the regulation in a way that all the use cases that um, in paper right now many organizations have, uh, they can start deploying it or testing, running a pilot. Um, and basically that's what we have been uh, helping organizations so far in a way to create a community. So Latching is, is, is moving in two directions. It's providing an infrastructure where basically um, it's based on Hyperledger vessels so organizations can connect to the public permission and version, and um, it's also an ecosystem. So we are basically, it's a global alliance where we are inviting organizations to be part of and deploy the use cases in, and the diversity of this ecosystem is, 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 is broad. We are talking about organizations developing solutions, but also uh, providing, for example, consultancy, legal assistance, education, and so on and so forth. So, what we have been seeing is that, um, it, and actually thanks to the Inter-American Development Bank vision, is that we have been trying to uh, promote the use cases and educate, educate organizations that they can now execute in, uh, use cases that sometimes were on, on paper or just ideas. Um, but yeah, that's... Wow. Uh, I want to talk about the specific role in a minute of the Inter-American Development Bank, which is fascinating unto itself. But you started by asking, uh, by describing uh, how you were working with regulators. Mm -hmm. I am from Canada and our financial services sector has a challenge because different jurisdictions have different regulatory bodies. For example, mm -hmm. securities in Canada are regulated at the provincial level. So the province of Ontario, province of Quebec, province of British Columbia. And the blockchain innovators in Canada have to deal with three different regulatory bodies. It's much mm -hmm. more streamlined in the United States. Inter-American Development Bank, Lackchain, you have all of these different countries across Latin mm -hmm. America 
what is the regulatory landscape like and how do you manage a diverse set of regulatory interests across mm -hmm. national or even regional lines? We have been, um, as part of the, the work that Inter-American Development Bank does, is uh, not only help countries in, in developing solutions, but it's actually helping to mature their legal uh, framework, let's say. So, and, and, and as part of many other aspects that uh, the IDB is helping countries. So in this case, we do a lot of research. Um, some of those research are based on, on legal framework of, of each country and identify what, what countries of maturity level they, they have in a way that they can adopt, for example, digital identity. Um, and, and what we have found uh, in most commonly on all the countries is that um, the regulatory limitations are based on, on anonymity of the transactions and uh, the relationship with uh, uh, cryptocurrency while they are executing a transaction. So the transaction fee, basically. Um, so what we have been trying to do is like getting rid of all those noise um, to the conversation. So in a way that we can focus only on the things that are uh, legal compliance. For example, right now, there is a, a, a country uh, that is uh, a, regulation, a, um, a stock market regulator in, in, in one country of the Caribbean that is actually adopting one of these solutions to speed up the uh, supervision uh, to all the stock market. So this, this way, um, they are uh, adding efficiency to the, to the stock market, but also reducing the cost for the players of, or, the, or the members of this stock market. And this is just because one small thing, and it's like the, this regulator found out that um, the transactions were not anonymous. Actually, uh, in, in, in Latching, we are doing, doing a, a, a two, a multi-signature for every transaction. So every node is signing that transaction, but also the user is also signing the transaction. So for the regulator, this is easy. It's like uh, music to the, to the ears, La, um, because it's actually the way that they need um, to support these kind of uh, adventures, let's say. So is the takeaway then that in dealing with regulators, start small, focus on a particular issue, a particular mm -hmm. use case as a means to help overcome those barriers to um, implementation? We, we have found that um, at the beginning on, on paper, because many organizations have in, in, on their papers use cases that they want to uh, pursue, but um, they are dealing with these uh, scale-up uh, challenges. But we have found out that many organizations are willing to move forward as long as there are other players moving forward. And the, the position of the I IDB is actually that. It's like, let's going to take a leadership role in the implementation of use cases, and let's going to de deal with uh, the governments um, that we work with uh, to, to support use cases. One of those use cases is actually very, cha is, is very amazing, which is Cadena. And Cadena is, is a solution to integrate uh, customs in 11 countries of Latin America. So the challenge is that um, we are very large, um, let's say, continent with a lot of countries. We're talking about more than 20 countries, in, in, including islands in, in the Caribbean and facilitating the, the exports and imports of those uh, um, commercials agreements is actually challenging. Okay. So we actually are doing uh, a solution to integrate the information that is actually private, but using uh, Tessera actually, uh, which is to enable uh, private channels with using Hyperledger Vessel. And, and they are able to share information between uh, customs. So this is actually uh, one example that we have been using to teach within the Latin America uh, how they can uh, scale up um, projects using using blockchain and basically get rid of the of the noise that w this technology can bring, um, providing good examples of uh, of real use cases. Mm -hmm. I am um, tremendously excited about the opportunities to reduce border friction, and you mentioned the role of leadership, um, we had a pilot project in place that was using blockchain technology to reduce friction between, trade friction between Canada and the United States. And it was championed by um, 
uh, leaders in government, uh, leaders in enterprise. And along the line, uh, unfortunately, the, the project um, did not come to fruition that leaders got cold feet. Mm -hmm. And the key players backed away. Mm -hmm. And it's very frustrating because those of us who know that these are, are pure value um, mm -hmm. plays, um, unfortunately, there's a, a negative association that's often um, a, associated with blockchain projects unfairly. What is the, you've been in a very fortunate position, I think, to mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. a, a multinational organization like the IADB mm -hmm. being behind your project. Mm -hmm. How important is that leadership equation to the success of Lackchain and the implementation of technology projects mm -hmm. like Hyperledger BaseU that deliver real business and social and and uh, economic value. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a totally new world when you have an organization like IDB supporting a specific, uh, specifically the project. And it's because of the reputation that this organization can bring to, to our projects. Actually, many organizations, startups or private sectors are willing to deploy their use cases just because they are uh, tied to the Inter-American Development Bank uh, name. Ju just because of that, that is bringing uh, certainty and a kind of reputational uh, level to their, to their own projects. So this is actually very important. Let me, let me share a little bit of uh, the experience that I had um, we are constantly meeting with, and probably many of you uh, have been in that situation uh, too, but we are constantly meeting with um, regulators or banks or institutionals um, that are very uh, well positioned in each of our countries probably. And when we start a conversation about blockchain, there's all, a lot of noise around that conversation. Mm -hmm. If it is uh, related to the merge, if it is related to a kind of a hacking, if it is related to cybersecurity things, and, and when we uh, educate, because mo I, I usually say that 70% of my conversation is kind of education, and the 30% is just specifically talking about specific solutions. Um, it's like um, when we are educating why is this technology different or how we can see it, and we bring to the conversation that latching as a project has the, 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 um, the Inter-American Development Bank as a supporter, this is an initiative coming from the uh, from the IDB. Uh, the conversation is totally different, and in 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 the in the atmosphere that you can feel in the in in the room is totally different, just because you have a, a, a well reputation organization. So this is actually the leadership of, of the organization, and this is actually uh, something that probably you have seen with the conversation with Irene Arias. is 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 actually in that way. Um, we we are in for, in, a, in a very fortunate position because this organization is actually pushing forward to move that technology. Um, and, and it's just because and probably everybody here in, this, in the room knows about it, it is that the potential that blockchain technology can bring to our countries. So the, the focus of the Inter-American Development Bank is to promote the development of the countries. And we are seeing the, the blockchain technology as one of those technologies that can close those gaps. Mm -hmm. Gaps in inclusion, in education, in financial system. So that is actually what we are looking in the Inter-American Development Bank, and it's very aligned to the technology. So that's, that's a motivation to, to promote it. Wonderful. We need more Inter-American Development Bank type leadership across different regions. I would mm -hmm. love to see that play out um, elsewhere. Um, you have listed a number of um, excellent use cases. Do you have a particular use case that is inspiring, that is well-developed and is adding immediate value that you'd like to describe? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, there are many projects going on with different levels of, of maturity. Um, the, the project that I love most is, is actually, uh, we, we call it in Spanish, is Ni Una Mas, which is basically uh, uh, no more girls. It's, it's actually a solution to uh, fight um, violence, intrafamiliar violence. And we are enabling um, uh, on our phones or uh, the phones of, of every person a panic kind of button where um, when you push that button, basically the, the phone is recording everything that is happening, uh, location, what is uh, the, 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 I don't know, the microphone recording, uh, the microphone, the 
picture, everything is recording it. And it's creating an authorized document of that on blockchain, particularly to give the, the, the legislature or the judge the opportunity to confirm that that event actually happened. And there is a very funny relationship between, between um, the observer and the violence. So the, usually the violence uh, occurs when nobody is uh, watching. Mm -hmm. But you feel that you are being under watch, um, that is actually minimized. So this is actually having in two ways to, to prevent uh, violence occur, but also to uh, provide a, a tool to the people on, 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 on the violence to, to basically have a tool to, to protect themselves. So it's changing and it's, that, wow. that's what I love it. I love it because it's changing the, the let's say, origin of the, of the proof of the violence. It's not my word against yours. Right. It's actually something Reporting that is- Reporting a moment in time. Is this exactly. in a particular country or is it all across the blockchain ecosystem? Well, it's actually uh, happening in Colombia right now, mm. but we are, um, in, through the Inter-American Development Bank, we are expanding that to cover uh, all basically all Latin America. Mm -hmm. And, wow. and, and that's what I love it because it's actually very uh, tied to protect life. Sure. And, and, and the other thing that I, maybe I would like to talk is about LACPAS. LACPAS is an initiative that uh, we started to develop with, um, with a health, uh, World Health Organization, specifically in, Pan in, in Latin America, which is the Pan American Health Organization, uh, to promote like, the um, vaccine certificates. So in every, every country you have, and probably you have seen with the COVID, we have that vaccine certificates, but we want to um, ensure that those certifications are valid. So we are do, um, developing with uh, 11 countries, a program where we are gonna basically uh, standardize the, the, the vaccine certification. We're doing some similar things with educational uh, diplomas and, and, and some other things. Wow, amazing. Um, I'm very inspired by the safety application. I think from my perspective as a woman and as a mother of a daughter, one of the um, opportunities that I appreciate most of all in uh, identity applications is when we have to show our ID to um, gain entrance to a facility of some kind, whether it's a pub or bar or wherever. And in doing so, I have to give over my name and address to a, a complete stranger. And I think the extra layer of, of mm -hmm. um, privacy mm -hmm. is extremely important and will create um, a lot more trust. I think our whole internet culture does not serve um, girls and young women and women at large. And these are the kinds of solutions that, mm -hmm. you know, inspire me and very much get me out of bed absolutely every day. So mm -hmm. awesome, awesome. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the friction and the obstacles that you've had to overcome. I mean, every day is not a picnic, clearly. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what lessons can you give this group about overcoming some of the really significant challenges that um, mm -hmm. blockchain has faced? Yeah, um, it, it's everything about education. If we go, if we go to, the, to the bottom of, of all the uh, fears, let's say, is, 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 is everything about education. And it's because most organizations doesn't understand, or at least in, in those organizations that are starting to understand, some groups are not understanding well uh, what is the technology or how this kind of technology can, um, can work. And for example, um, we were working with some organization that is uh, actually a regulator as well, and that the IT department had very clearly uh, the solution, um, how to, to what, what to implement and how this kind of solution going to, to fit. But the legal organization, the legal department didn't understand anything about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was a challenge, an internal challenge that they were facing. And we were kind of in the middle trying to educate uh, on both sides because at some point, um, even though they had a very clear understanding of the solution, they were not clearly 100% uh, on how the network might be might be working. So uh, everything is related with education. And that's why I said like probably the 70% of our time has been like trying to educate, to, to educate people and, and to teach how uh, we can differentiate ourselves within a, a public permission because that is also a concept. Every, everything um, or many organizations are thinking that uh, the information they're putting in, in blockchains uh, will be like visible to everybody and, and you are gonna be publishing 
uh, private information or a strategic information that shouldn't be there. Um, at the end of the day, it's not there, but it's some of the concepts that we need to like clarify when we have these com these conversations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Elon, what tooling do you use to assist in your educational work? Mm -hmm. um, do you host roundtables? Do you have one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one meetings? Do you use research? Mm -hmm. What are the tools that you use that have brought you success in that education yeah, role? Yeah, that, that's a very good that's a very good question because the 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 need of education might come from different uh, perspective. For example, one of those perspectives is technical, um, like the maintainers here that are very well in terms of, of, of programming. Well, that is actually a need that we need, to, uh, we need to close in terms of maturity. But also what we have been doing is like bringing uh, education platform. We, one of the, the partners of LACNET, uh, maybe we can talk about, about LACNET in a few, but one of the, the, the organizations that, that we are uh, promoting within LACNET ecosystem is an orc orchestration entity that is called LACNET. In LACNET. LACNET. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we are, um, one of the, the partners of LACNET is actually Red Clara, which is an entity that groups like 2,000, uh, 2020, uh, 2020 uh, universities across Latin America and the Caribbean. And with them, we are developing a program, um, train the trainers. But when we are talking about train the trainers, is train the teachers of all <laughs> of these 20, uh, 2,200 universities um, to uh, spread the, the, the knowledge of blockchain all across Latin America and the Caribbean. So th that's how we are getting started. Uh, but we have uh, already created materials that we are inviting organizations to participate. Now, what is happening in reality is when we are dealing a conversation in a, in a, in a group session um, is that we usually uh, bring different, um, let's say, um, um, skill sets to the conversation. For, for example, w um, one of our teammates is, is very uh, uh, well mastered in, in legislation. And he is not a master in every legislation of each country, but it's very well. Uh, so when we are going to talk with a regulator, we usually go with him. Uh, because if there is a kind of question about regulation, he might be the person who can who can who can answer answer well that um, that kind of doubt. Uh, we are doing the same thing with a technical with a technical level. So we we go to the to the sessions um, with a group of per, of people that can basically collaborate in different aspects of of, of that most commonly questions that the uh, mm -hmm. organization can have. So stack your teams with diverse uh -huh. representatives who mm -hmm. can understand the technology the legal frameworks, um, mm -hmm. the, the business opportunities, and have the communicator. One of my challenges in research is I often work with extremely technical people who really understand the tech, but their ability to communicate mm -hmm. and distill the opportunity that the technology creates is n not always that easy. So diverse teams, different skill sets, yeah, that's, that works that's everywhere. a practical takeaway. Mm -hmm. It was a theory of mine, but it's nice to hear you say that that has mm -hmm. brought success. Yeah. So let's talk about LACNET. Mm -hmm. Tell us about this particular uh, network. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about how organizations can scale up their um, use cases. And one of the challenges that we were facing with organizations, and I'm talking about institutional players or governments, is that they need to sign a contract, somebody who can ensure, um, basically assure that the network is gonna be available. So who's gonna play that role for organizations? And LACNET is that, is, is that, is that organization. LACNET basically orchestrates um, the latching network. Um, we, we say that latching is kind of a, a, a ecosystem uh, based on Hyperledger Vessel, but it's, it's, it's called latching, right? So, um, LACNET orchestrate the latching network, and basically organizations can sign up a contract, a, a service contract with LACNET to deploy their use cases on mainnet environment. So with this uh, contract, organizations, and specifically when they will go to, to the legal <laughs> review, um, they, can, they, can, they can see 
that there is an entity that is support the, the, the infrastructure, that is going to ensure that the availability in the long term of the infrastructure, the information is going to be uh, there. And, and basically, that's, um, that's a value proposition that we are providing through, through LACnet. Uh, as well, there are similarities with some other kind of uh, IT products. For example, you can have a, a, a support team helping you in case that you have a problem with your node or any other um, uh, connectivity issue. But basically, that's, that's what we have been doing. And some of the things that we have been learning and we are doing also through LACnet is the consultancy and services. Mm -hmm. um, we have been like um, exploring the, a, diver, a large diversity of use cases from CDVCs to um, educational certificates, let's say. Um, and, and for those use cases, we have like uh, successful uh, proof of concepts or solutions already on, on, on production. And what we have been seeing is, is organizations that need needs to close the gap of education, that they tell us, hey, can you teach us about um, what you have done in, 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 for example, in CBDCs, or how can I deploy my national blockchain services, let's say. Um, so we do that uh, service through, through LACnet as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So LACnet, I'm going to summarize, is essentially, it's like a, a blockchain as a service. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, blockchain as a service. Distributing nodes, and uh -huh. how it, can you give us a sense of cost? Can you come to Canada <laughs> and help us out? Um, and well, you go I, about that pricing. I, I love, I, I, I love because LACnet is a non-profit organization. Right. So we, we are going to talk about the cost. Don't expect much to it. Uh, probably your cable, <laughs> cable in your house is, is, is it worth more than, than the subscription that you can have in, in LACnet, which is around $170 per month. So it's wow. kind of ridiculous, but yeah. That's a business opportunity. <laughs> Amazing. Um, let's dig into Basu um, specifically as a uh, architecture. What were what was it about Hyperledger Basu that um, provided the kind of solution that you were looking for? Yeah, a couple of things. The 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 first one is the um, the concept that is behind that is very aligned to what we are looking in the in latching, which is the open source. Mm -hmm. We are very tied to open source. Everything that we have been doing is open source. And in having the support of um, Linux Foundation, Hyperledger Foundation, is actually a very, very aligned with what we're looking for. And, and, and we have been like trying to uh, well participate in this kind of events, but also to expand our participation and integrate Firefly and, and some other um, um, functionality that we can uh, take advantage of or put in um, um, a, to service to, to our governments. So um, that's one of the things. The other thing is, is actually the, um, the possibility to create a public permissioned network, which is actually what we have been um, doing um, through latching. Um, we found out that our model is actually deploy um, public permission. We are uh, agnostic to the technology. Mm -hmm. However, the, the best protocol that have fit to this vision is actually a public permissioned network and it's Hyperledger Vesu. And also there is a, 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 another beautiful thing, it's actually the, commun the developers community. Um, I, I don't know, probably you have better numbers than mine, but um, probably 90% or 80% of the developers are uh, Solidity developers. So this is actually very, 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 um, compatible. Uh, yeah, compatible with, with Hyperledger Vesu. Some, some of the, um, things that we have been seeing is uh, a lot of adoption uh, using Solidity as a, as a protocol for uh, smart contracts. So. Wow, amazing. We have one minute left, Elon. I'd like to give you the opportunity to share a um, final takeaway about what people in this room um, can do in their own communities, their own regions. Um, yeah. Any final, any, any final thoughts? Yeah, well, um, one of the things that we believe is, is very important is try to create collaboration between organizations. Um, and specifically, um, where we can add value between, between, between us. Um, we have been seeing, like, for example, the use case that we had with um, um, BNDS, which is the National Bank of, of um, Brazil, uh, of development, um, where we have been collaborating to deploy their, their network as well for, for Brazil. And it has been a very good rela relationship and based on the collaboration. 
in a way that um, we are expanding this. We have been uh, working with the World Bank um, to deploy use cases uh, across um, or beyond Latin America. Uh, it has been very successful in, in a way that, um, that we can, well, we have a very aligned uh, vision between organizations. So that's, that is uh, something that facilitates the conversation. But actually, that is helping organizations to adapt where there is no um, a multilateral or there is no uh, a multi-regional blockchain infrastructure. So, if, uh, for example, in this case, we have been uh, able to collaborate with um, Africa or Asia where, where it is possible. Um, so I believe that probably um, talk each other, um, see how we can uh, collaborate, what we can uh, do together has been like an opportunity, especially this time where we are basically um, growing and growing uh, every day and, 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 and we are discovering and still discovering what uh, they can, this technology can bring us. So Wonderful. Keep managing those relationships. Keep collaborating. Ilan, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, man.